the question is what exactly would I do if I would uh, start learning penetration testing in 2022 so uh, one of the ways I've actually today I've, I've actually looked over try hack me uh, just uh, in a previous video I thought of or I said that I'm am going to uh, pay for the premium version because it's only ten dollars in an effort to actually maybe work on something uh, new that I want to learn especially when it comes to for example when it comes to penetration testing I, I kind of suck at Windows penetration testing even though uh, so far I didn't have any engagements where Windows was the central point so it might not necessarily be in my best interest to learn Windows if I don't use it in my actual day-to-day -day research or practice or day-to-day uh, -day penetration tests that I'm actually doing. So um, I'm still considering actually trying TriHack Me, the premium version, just I'm actually paying for it uh, because this actually motivates me to put in the work every day. So. Uh, as I looked over their stuff here, and most of you who are following me know that I don't do CTFs and I kind of hate that stuff. Um, I've looked over these learning paths and I thought uh, I might do a video on what I would do if I wanna if I would be starting to learn penetration testing today. One of that is uh, uh, one of the thought one of the paths that I looked over is the junior penetration tester and also uh, those of you who have actually been following me over the years know that I'm very fond on uh, hands-on uh, learning so whether or not I learn from a book from a video or from a course uh, my most important thing is to actually interact with what I'm doing if I'm actually learning from a book I'm doing it on my tablet and I uh, highlight and add annotations, I draw on the book and all kinds of stuff just to feel that I have some sort of an interaction with the type of material that I'm learning. And this actually applies to uh, TriHack Me, one of... Um, I don't think everything that's on this platform is CTF-ish, which is why I'm actually talking about it today and uh, the junior penetration tester would be a good start in my situation if I would be learning penetration testing in 2022 because this actually is a hands-on it's actually intermediate as they say uh, and it says covers the technical skills that will allow you to succeed as a junior penetration tester you will have the practical skills necessary to perform security assessments against web applications and enterprise infrastructure so what are you actually learning? I've done this uh, very rapidly today, the pen testing fundamentals, which as you can see, you don't need anything uh, to actually finish it. You just uh, go through this room, like I think I finished it in maybe 15 minutes because I've actually also read everything that uh, they are talking here. And this is very introductory level. It talks about penetration testing methodologies, uh, the PTES, I guess. Do they talk about the PTES? The penetration testing execution standard. So they talk about OSSTMM, OWASP, uh, the NIST. They don't actually talk about the PTES, they talk about the types of uh, testing, if you do black box, gray box, white box, black box is where you don't have access to the code, gray box is where uh, you have partial access to the code and white box is it's with uh, sort of like an open book penetration test. Uh, and also you have a practical uh, like assessment here which is really easy and it's extremely extremely introductory now going back principles of security this uh, might this also uh, is introductory uh, then you have you have a lot of exercises in here when it comes to introduction to web hacking Content discovery, subdomain enumeration. This is really big if you're talking about uh, an asset with a lot of um, infrastructure. For example, if 
this might also be uh, efficient or this might also be very good for someone who's uh, doing bug bounty hunting or cybersecurity research because it allows you to understand what enumeration is all about when when you try to discover the entire attack surface of a target that might also imply going horizontally and going vertically and if uh, you fellows who are watching this video are interested I could start going through all of these um, all of these scenarios or what do you call them on try hack me one by one in videos and maybe this is this would be very beneficial not only to you but also to me now a very big when it comes to penetration testing is authentication and authorization testing this is really important because when it comes to authentication and authorization you find a lot of vulnerabilities i personally because a lot of this is actually custom implemented i'm in my penetration tests in all of my penetration tests um and uh, engagement, cybersecurity engagements, I find issues of this kind. Authorization, authentication, either. Uh, not necessarily really interesting, but file inclusion, SSRF, cross-site scripting, which I don't look over, but it might be, it might be beneficial when you're actually doing input validation testing. Command injection and SQL injection. This is also really important and if you find these types of issues when you're doing bug bounty or cybersecurity research, you're actually golden because they are paying a lot for this sort of issues. Now, burp suite. Burp suite, really important. This is central to all my penetration tests. I use the burp suite professional edition. And um, in this case, it talks about the basics, probably how to set up repeater which is the most used feature in in my uh, situation i think the repeater and also the target section where it maps the entire application uh, are two of the most used features i also use the extender and in, intruder here and there because uh, when i would actually use other um other tools to test uh, what I would like to test when it comes to Intruder. Intruder is, I find that I use Intruder mostly for brute forcing. Network security. This is beneficial if you're actually testing an infrastructure who has network assets. I'm doing that on Synac. I have a lot of network targets and this is really interesting because when it comes to these types of targets, I actually go horizontally and vertically and when when I actually go v horizontally it's that is a lot of uh, traffic generating uh, noise so that I can put it like that I don't use nmap but I'm actually using other tools and techniques that I might be talking about in future videos if uh, those of you who are watching are in Interested. But since this is a junior penetration testing learning path, it's really important to know the basics. And Nmap is one of the oldest tools for network mapping. And it's really important to actually know its capabilities. Vulnerability research, vulnerability one-on-one, -on -one, exploit vulnerabilities. This might be applicable in different situations, like for example, if you have a target with a lot of assets, like for example, a very, very big target like Google.com, or maybe Tesla, or maybe, I don't know, Verizon, or Yahoo, or whatever big target you have, you could actually uh, run like for example automated uh, tools such as for example nuclei to find vulnerabilities and maybe to actually exploit those vulnerabilities not necessarily exploit in the bad sense not exploit them in the bad sense but uh, most importantly just for exemplification or for showcase purposes um, for proof of concept purposes because when you would actually prove or you when you would send your report 
to the security team or to the triagers depending on which scenario applies to you you would have to actually know how to uh, exploit the type of vulnerability that you found Metasploit, I don't think Metasploit at least in my case Metasploit is very very less important I mostly never use Metasploit but as someone who uh, is in cybersecurity who is a penetration tester they should know Metasploit because alongside Anmap Metasploit is a part of uh, the tools or the frameworks that have been most widely used over the years in this field privilege escalation this um, would apply to scenarios like for example in a network situation where you would test a target a network target and you would find you could actually find your way through from the weakest link in the network to actually maybe obtain admin credentials or actually ob obtain administrative privileges on the highest uh, privilege target in your network anyways um, privilege escalation is important in certain situations but alongside Metasploit in my particular scenario I don't actually use them a lot so as I said in the beginning of the video if I were to learn something or to get deeper into something to actually add to my repository of skills personal skills in penetration testing I would do uh, Windows related stuff when it comes to Windows penetration testing Windows privilege escalation and in those types of scenarios Metasploit is highly applicable as well as privilege escalation and also part of network security but again to repeat myself uh, if you are interested if those of you who watch are interested in me going through all of these it could take a quite a lot of videos maybe 30 40 50 videos of um, dedicated time to go through the junior penetration tester so shoot in the comments below and i believe this is it for this video